How to calculate deferred tax under IS-12. I'm Sylvia of CPD Box, the place to learn IFRS accounting standards quite fast. And I see that deferred tax can be quite confusing. So in this lecture, we will shortly introduce the concepts of the deferred tax. And I want you to understand what it really is. And then we will tackle very easy example of calculating deferred tax. And also we will focus a bit on a tax base and look at the examples because that's our pain point too. So what's the deferred tax? The official definition says that it is an income tax payable or recoverable in future periods in respect of the temporary differences, unused tax losses and unused tax credit. And this is set in the standard IS 12 paragraph 5. It's calculated as temporary difference multiplied with the appropriate tax rate and the temporary difference is calculated as carrying amount of an asset or liability less its tax base and that's the amount attributed to that asset or liability for tax purposes but we will focus on a tax base later in this lecture. Now, if carrying amount is greater than the tax base, then you have a taxable temporary difference resulting in a deferred tax liability. And if carrying amount is smaller than the tax base, then you have a deductible temporary difference resulting in a deferred tax asset. Some of you might argue that it's different for assets and for liabilities, but stick with me. I will explain that a bit later too. So these were official definitions. But what does that all actually mean? To understand deferred tax, let's make clear what it is not. It is not a tax that you will pay in the future. Not at all. Instead, it is accrual for tax or provision for tax because the goal is to show the tax effect of some transaction in the same period as the related deductible expense or taxable income occur. And this is very simply said in order to put it in your brain firmly. It is an accrual or provision for tax. And it is the same as accrual principle to recognize expense in the period when the service was consumed, not when it was paid. So at the year end, all accountants try to find out what services have been consumed by the company, but the invoices have not yet been received from the suppliers and they make accruals. And similarly, you make accrual for tax with the deferred tax. Let's illustrate it on a very simple example. On the 1st January 2x2, the company lent 100,000 currency units to its subsidiary on 3% interest. The loan will be repaid on 1st January 2x3 together with interest. In 2x2, the company recognized interest revenue of 3,000 currency units, but it will pay taxes from that revenue in 2x3 when the cash arrives. Show effects of this transaction on profit or loss in both years and current income tax rate is 20%. So let's take a look at how the interest income and related tax affects profit or loss. So we have this small table here and in 2OX2, the company needs to recognize the interest revenue of 3% of 100,000. So that's 3,000. Although this revenue will be received only 2OX3 in cash. In fact, that interest was earned for loan in 2OX2. So we need to recognize the income in 2OX2. The journal entry in 2OX2 is therefore we debit deferred interest income, which is some asset in the balance sheet with 3000 and credit interest income in profit or loss with the same amount. Let's take a look at the tax. In 2OX2, the company does not pay any current income tax on that interest income because the question says that the interest income will be taxed when the cash is received. So the company pays zero tax in 2OX2, but it pays 20% of tax in 2OX3 because the cash will be received on 1st January. And the next year in 2OX3, the interest revenue is zero because the loan is repaid on 1st January, but the company taxes the cash receipt. 
So it pays 20% of 3000, which is 600 in 2OX3. So now look at that. The net effect of this simple transaction on profit or loss is plus 3000 in 2OX2 and minus 600 in 2OX3, which is not right because this appears as two unrelated transactions. But the truth is different. These two transactions are tied together and we must show the tax effects together with transactions. And we do this exactly by recognizing deferred tax. How? So let's get back to our lecture for a minute. For precise calculation of the deferred tax, we always analyze assets and liabilities in the statement of financial position or the balance sheet. And yes, we may look at the expenses and income in profit or loss too, but this is the basis. So we have this formula here that you have seen before, and we will determine the carrying amount and the tax base of the asset or liability. In this example, we are focusing on deferred interest revenue in our balance sheet or the statement of financial position. Carrying amount of this asset is 3000 and the tax base is zero at the end of 2OX2. For now, let me just say it is zero. I mean the tax base and I will explain it later in this lecture. The temporary difference is therefore 3000. And as you can see yourself, the carrying amount is greater than the tax base. And therefore, this difference is taxable and we will have a deferred tax liability. Let's apply the tax rate of 20% from the question. And so the closing deferred tax liability at the end of 2OX2 is 600. Now, Opening deferred tax liability was zero because we have no information on that and there was nothing. And therefore, the period change is the increase of the liability of 600 in minus, of course, because it's a liability. And the journal entry is therefore debit profit or loss, deferred income tax expense and credit deferred tax liability. Let's bring this up to our table. As you can see in 2OX2, we have deferred tax expense of 600. And so the net effect on profit or loss after taxes is 2,400, which is interest income after tax. And what happens the next year with the deferred tax in 2OX3? First, we need to book the receipt of the loan repayment and interest. So here's the entry. We debit bank account with 103,000 because the company receives 100,000 as the repaid loan and 3,000 as interest. And we credit deferred interest income with 3,000 and the loan with 100,000. Let's fill in the table. Carrying amount of the deferred interest income asset in the balance sheet is zero because we have just removed it, they recognized it. And its tax base is also zero because the transaction is now completely closed with all its tax effects. So the temporary difference is zero and it means that the closing deferred tax liability from this transaction is also zero. However, we had opening liability of 600 and therefore the change in a year is 600. Let's do the journal entry. We debit deferred tax liability with 600 and we credit deferred tax income with 600. And again, let's put that above in the table. In 2OX3, we had deferred tax income of 600. And so the net effect of the transaction in 2OX3 is zero as it should be. And here you can clearly see that the deferred tax is indeed an accrual for tax. And with the help of the deferred tax, we are showing the tax effect of the transaction together with the transaction. And without it, as you can see here, the tax effect in, is in a different year than the transaction itself due to different tax rules. So I hope it's clear now. Now let's get back to our formula and see. We're quite clear what carrying amount is. We also know the tax rates. You need to use the tax rates enacted for the future periods. 
But what about the tax base? Well, as I mentioned, that's the pain point. So let's see. It is the amount attributed to the asset or liability for tax purposes. And that's the beautiful definition in IS 12, paragraph 5. But how that shall be understood? What is the tax benefit or the tax burden of some asset or liability in the future tax returns? And IS 12 gives us guidance. For assets, the tax base is the amount deductible against any taxable benefit. That's paragraph 7 of IS 12. And for liabilities, the tax base is the carrying amount of the liability less amount deductible for tax purposes in the future. That's paragraph 8 of IS 12. Let's break this down and let's focus on assets. You need to ask, what's left in the pocket for the future tax deductions. It's better to see that in the example. So the question is, determine the tax base as of 31st December 2OX2, the tax rate is 20%. In 2OX2, company paid 30,000 currency units for the development of software, all included in intangible assets not yet amortized. The tax law permits to deduct these expenses when paid. All right, so how do we determine what's left in the pocket for future tax deductions? The cost of capitalized development is 30,000 and we need to deduct the amount that we have already claimed in tax return when paid, which was full 30,000. And as a result, there is nothing left for future tax deductions, zero. So the tax base is zero, by the way, what would be the deferred tax? Well, carrying amount is 30,000. Deferred tax is carrying amount of 30,000 less tax base of zero multiplied with a tax rate of 20%, which gives us 6,000. And it is a liability because carrying amount is greater than the tax base. Next example. Acquisition cost of a car was 20,000 currency units in 2OX1. The company uses straight line depreciation method. Useful life is five years. The tax law permits to deduct 20% of cars cost per year over four years in total. So here we actually need to calculate the car's tax base as its cost, which was 20,000 less amount already deducted in tax returns, which was in two years of 20x1 and 20x2, which is 2 times 25% deduction per year times cost. That's 10,000 in total. So we have 10,000 currency units left in the pocket for the deductions in the future. And this is the cost tax base. What about the deferred tax? For this purpose, we also need the car's carrying amount, which is cost of 20,000 less accumulated depreciation, straight line method over five years, and two years have already passed. So that would be 20,000 divided by five times two, and this is 12,000. And so the deferred tax is carrying amount of 12,000 less tax base of 10,000 multiply with a tax rate of 20% and that's 400 a liability, I mean deferred tax liability, because carrying amount is greater than the tax base. Now let's take a look at the tax base for liabilities. As you can see, it is the carrying amount of the liability less the amount deductible for tax purposes in the future periods. And so the magic easy question to ask is, what can you not deduct in the future for tax purposes? So let's see the example to bring this home. In 2OX2, company recognized a provision of 500,000 currency units for the warranty repairs. The tax law permits deducting the expenses for warranty repairs only when they are paid and no repairs have been made in 2OX2. So the carrying amount of the liability at the year end is minus 500,000 currency units because no repairs were made. So that's just that provision.
And a note, it is minus. And I advise you always work with your liabilities as minuses and assets as pluses because your deferred tax will work nicely. Less amount deductible for tax purposes in the future, and that's hopefully full amount of 500,000, because when you pay for the repairs, then you can deduct that amount for tax purposes. So the difference is exactly the answer to the question, what can you not deduct in the future? Well, zero, because you can deduct it all. So the tax base of that provision is zero. What about the deferred tax? Carrying amount is minus 500,000. And so the deferred tax is carrying amount of minus 500,000, less tax base of zero, times the tax rate 20%, which is 100,000. And here, because the carrying amount is smaller than the tax base, because it's negative 500,000 as a liability compared with zero, we have a deferred tax asset here. At least this is how I teach this concept. Of course, you can learn that in absolute terms, but that would be more complicated. Last but not least, some items are not recognized as assets or liabilities, but they still do have a tax base and the deferred tax arises. For example, tax loss is carried forward. That's it for today. Please like this video if it helps. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay tuned for more. And if you need to learn IFRS more deeply and fast, check out my free newsletter on cpdbox.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.